Hey, welcome to Resource Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Please continue to do so. Like many of you, we've all been watching what's going on with Russia, Ukraine, if and when they're going to invade, and all this other kind of nonsense. And I was asked by the missus, hey, are any of the uh, allies in Europe sending troops or anything? And I said, no, don't think so. And she goes, what about NATO? And I said, no, don't think so. There's a lot of talk, but not much action. She goes, well, how's come? Why aren't they? If Putin is such a huge threat, why aren't they doing anything? Why is the United States the only one sending soldiers there? I didn't have an answer for her. So I spent a couple days doing some research. And the answers I found, I didn't like. And I am extremely disappointed in our government. And Obama was given the warnings to Russia back in 2011, 2012, 2014. Don't cross this line or else there'll be sanctions. Don't take Ukraine. There'll be actions. There'll be harsh consequences. And Biden is saying the exact same thing that his former boss was saying to Putin back in 2014. If you don't believe me, look on YouTube. There's a whole litany of speeches from Obama warning Putin about Russia or about Ukraine. So why aren't the, our allies getting all whipped up about Ukraine and stopping the red tide? I'll tell you why. Because under Clinton, Secretary of State, we paid close to 10 million in tax dollars, American tax dollars, to disarm the Ukrainian people. That's right, we paid the government of Ukraine, a duly elected government that was pro-EU, pro-Putin, to disarm their civilians so they wouldn't be a threat to Russia. So what they didn't confiscate, break, melt down, Hillary Clinton sent to the Middle East to have the Arab Spring. Another foreign failure by this United States. Syria is a failure. Libya is a failure. Yemen is a dramatic failure because now they're shooting rockets into United Arab Emirates and into Saudi Arabia, supported by Iran. Oh, and by the way, Joe Biden administration just released a billion dollars from the bank to Iran to get him back to the table to discuss nuclear proliferation. They're going to use that billion dollars and put it right into their nuclear arsenal that they're building and create World War III. But this administration said, here's a billion dollars. Have at it. Just like when we sent them a pallet of money in the middle of the night, pallets of money. And we got nothing for it, and they enriched more uranium than they could have ever done before. And we're doing the exact same thing. But I digress. So we disarmed the Ukrainian people. We got the nuclear missiles out of Ukraine sent back to Russia with the promise Ukraine would never become a NATO member. Now, they're saying, well, Maybe Ukraine should become a NATO member enraging Putin. Back then in 2012-2014, he took Crimea back because he says that's the home of our Black Sea fleet and we're going to keep it no matter what. And I don't give a damn about your sanctions. So he did that with, with Obama doing nothing but giving warnings. Now, fast forward to 2022, we're spending billions of dollars rearming the Ukrainian people with arms that were originally bought back and sent to the Middle East. We're rearming them, saying, here, defend yourself against the communist red tide coming to invade your country. And then we wonder why none of our allies are supporting us. They're saying, hey, we've seen this before. The person that's advising Obama now or Biden now 
Victoria Newland staged a false flag operation by hiring snipers to kill Russians or Ukrainian soldiers and blame it on Russia. We're the ones that set up the false flags. So when you see this douchebag come out in front of the cameras and say, well, we have good information that Russia may stage a false flag operation using crisis actors and killing Ukrainian soldiers or vice versa. We did it. That's where he got the idea from. We're guilty of it. Ask Victoria Newland. She staged a coup for a duly elected government to install Zelensky that is a pro-Western government. Further enraging Putin, saying, you broke your word. Now I'm going to take it back, and we're going to start all over again. And that's why the Allies are saying, hey, we've seen this. We've been here, done this. You guys, this is your mess. We're not sending our, our boys to die for your screw-ups. And that's exactly what it is. Our screw-up. And what's sad is, the way they talk about the casualties of war, oh, 50,000 people could be dead in days if they invade Kiev. They talk about it nonchalantly. Think about how big your city may be. 50, 55, 60,000 people dead, your city would be wiped out. Place yourself in that city. And then they're saying, oh, we got to have patriotism, Ukrainian patriotism. Look at these brand new shiny weapons the United States just supplied. You would have still had them had Clinton not disarmed you. It's all a circle jerk operation. The same people that caused problems under the Obama administration are the same people that are causing problems in this Biden administration. And it's never going to stop until people, patriots, stand up and say, no, my boy, my daughter is not going to war because you don't like these people. Victoria Newland should be pulled before Congress in open air setting and asked about her involvement in the Russia overthrow. She's already on open mic saying, F the EU states. Don't believe these people. They have to whip up support from senators and, and congressmen for a war with Russia. Those are the same people that are bought and paid for by the arms operation, military operation, the defense cycle, whatever you want to call it. They're bought and paid for shills. Lindsey Graham, one of the biggest ones. Don't believe it. They're lying to you. The only thing you can do is get these people out, keep on prepping, educate yourself. So when they say, we got to fight Putin, we got to fight Russia, we got to fight these communist invaders, not when we're at fault. Yeah, we got we to gotta make sure Putin doesn't take over Europe, but I don't want World War III over it when we started it. That's all I have to say about Russia, Ukraine. If it happens, it happens. I'm done with it. Russia is going to take Ukraine, in my opinion, and we're going, to, we're going to get involved in it. Biden is going to kill us. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Greg out.